I can I can start it so the attendees can come come on in now. Yeah, that sounds good. And we'll just right. at seven we can begin. Yep. Katie, you're saying Kingston is the one who's uh, um, doing the tech uh, technician. Correct. Kingston? Yes. Okay. Kingston. Got it. Thanks. Katie, is there going to be a public works rep on like Kalosh for the project? Hey, Kalosh just signed in. Do you want him as a panelist or attendee? Uh, I just, he might need to answer questions from the planning commission stuff. So. Yeah, panelist. You want him as a panelist? Yes, please. Okay, I'm promoting him. And then Sean, if you pull up your PowerPoint, let's go to Sean's PowerPoint. The instructions. <clears throat> it's nice to see you. Managed <laughs> <laughs> to uh, being at home. <laughs> were you sharing? Were you going to share your screen, Sean? Yeah, I'm, I'm just okay. getting it set up. And okay. Sorry. I think we're ready. Is uh... okay. Whenever you're ready, Chair Newman. <clears throat> All the meeting of the Capital Planning Commission to order. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioners Christensen. Here. Ruth. Here. Welch. Here. Wilk. Here. And Chairperson Newman. Here. Okay, the next uh, item is the Pledge of Allegiance. And there's a little picture of the flag, uh, I think, on your computer. So uh, we'll begin. I pledge allegiance. To the, to the flag, flag of the United States of America. Of the United States of America. To the Republic. To the Republic. For which you stand. One nation. 
Under, under God, indivisible, and that last clause kind of has some special meaning this month. But, uh, next is oral communication. Do we have any additions to, or deletions to the agenda? We had two um, emails that came in today for the project on FANMAR, and hopefully you all got a chance to read those. So for item um, 3A, 208 FANMAR Way, there's two emails that came in. They are posted on our website. And no okay. additions or deletions to the agenda. Otherwise. All right, let's back, back up and give a general introduction here. I gave everyone a chance to join us <clears throat> in accordance with the current shelter in place order from Santa Cruz County Health Service and Executive Order N2920, Executive Department of the State of California. This planning commission meeting is not physically open to the public. Limited staff are present in the uh, planning chambers and the commissioners are participating remotely by a video call. Members of the Planning Commission can use the reaction choices in Zoom to indicate they would like to speak, similar to raising a hand. This meeting is cablecast live on Charter Communications Cable TV Channel 8 and is being recorded to be rebroadcast on the following Wednesday at 8 a.m. and on Saturday following the first rebroadcast at 1 p.m. on Charter Channel 71 and Comcast Channel 25. Meetings can also be viewed live from the city's website and with the Zoom meeting link also available on our website. Our technician tonight is Kingston from Community TV. Public comment can be emailed or called into the Planning Commission. I believe you've received some general instruction in that regard. Members of the public may submit public comment only once for each item by email or phone call. However, the applicant on public hearings will have an opportunity to respond to public comments. To call in comments, before the item you wish to comment on, call the phone number and enter the meeting ID display. Press the hash key when prompted for a participant ID. To raise your hand to make a comment, press star nine on your phone, wait to hear that you are unmuted and then make your comment. You will have up to three minutes to speak. If you are watching the meeting via Zoom, you can take, you can use the participant option to raise your hand and make a comment when unmuted by the moderator. To email comments, identify the item you wish to comment on in your email subject line. Email comments will be accepted starting now up until I announce that public comment for that particular item is closed. Each comment will be read aloud for up to three minutes or displayed on a screen. Emails and calls received outside of the comment period outlined above will not be included in the record. This meeting, this is the first time we've had a meeting uh, using this particular technology. Uh, it's a new challenge for the Planning Commission. These hearings are important to the people participating, both applicants and members, and we understand that. Uh, we didn't create the little corona bugs, but uh, our staff has done a great job in setting up this uh, alternative procedure, and we will do our best to uh, have everyone heard and make uh, the best decisions we can. So. With that in mind, we will move on to uh, public comments. And this is an opportunity for any member of the public to comment on an item that is not on the agenda. And uh, do we want to wait three minutes for those or do are we, are we prepared to move ahead? I think we're prepared to move ahead for Okay. General public. Yeah, I think in, in the general comment in the future, if we continue to do this, we should tell people if they want if they want to do public comments 
an item's not on the agenda, they should send those in ahead of time. Um, do, so, we, do we have any hands up for? There, there are no hands up right now. We did receive an email, but I don't, I believe it's about a, a actual uh, agenda item. I see that. Okay, yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> so then next, uh, do we have any comments from any commissioners at this point? If not, uh, mm -hmm. they can wait until we get back to the end of the uh, agenda. We have another opportunity for commission comments. And any, any staff comments at this point? No staff comments at this point. At the end of the evening during the director's report, I'll give an update on our efforts um, to, for businesses. <laughs> Okay, so that takes us to public hearings, and we, we have four public hearings tonight. We're going to take them in the order that they are on the agenda. Um, again, members of the public, the applicant will have an opportunity after when we turn the public uh, hearing open to the public. The applicant will have an opportunity to comment, and members of the public can comment once. And then the applicant will have an opportunity to reply, and that, that's the end of public participation, and the commissioners will discuss and make a decision. So the first item is 208 Fanmar Way, and that is an application for a design permit for a second story addition to vary for the required parking space dimensions and required driveway landscape area for a single family residence located with the RMLM Residential Low Medium Density Zoning District. Uh, staff report, please. Thank you. Chairman, I, this is Peter Wilk. I need to recuse myself from this item. And that's due to geographical proximity. Correct. So I'll just move out of view, I guess. Commissioner Wilk, if you can uh, turn off your mic and be muted and also turn off your video, please. I, I'm really frightened to touch this. <laughs> we can do, oh, there you go. Very good. Hi, can, can everybody hear me? Yes. 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 Good evening, yes. Planning Commissioner, Chair uh, Newman. Um, the application before you is proposing a second story addition with a variance request for the required parking space dimensions and driveway landscaping to an existing non-conforming single family residence. The property is located at 208 Fanmar Way within the multifamily residential low medium density zoning district. The existing single story residence as it appears today surrounded by one and two story single family homes in the Upper Village neighborhood. The proposed site plan, the blue area represents the proposed second story coverage <laughs> and the red outline indicates the first story footprint. The remodel increases the floor area by 346 square feet for a maximum floor area ratio of approximately 58%. Modifications are 70% of the fair market value of the structure, which is under the 80% non-conforming structural alteration limit. So the modifications are permissible under that limitation. The existing and proposed east and south elevations seen here, uh, or the front and driveway side. The proposed remodel utilizes stucco siding on the first story and wood shingle siding on the second story. The remodel includes a gabled composition roof and a deck overlooking Fanmar Way. The existing and proposed west and north elevations. So the project is, is uh, has an existing driveway that currently provides two uncovered parking spaces with substandard dimensions. The driveway does not include the required landscape strip adjacent to the property at 206 Fanmar Way. Additions of more than 10% must be compliant with the parking standard. With that, the applicant is requesting a variance to allow an addition of more than 10% without meeting the minimum parking dimensions and the required <coughs> driveway landscape area. The 
The Capitola Municipal Code, Municipal Code states that the Planning Commission may grant a variance permit when it makes the findings shown above. The subject property has a lot size of 1,804 square feet and a street frontage of 25 feet. The lot is small by Capitola standards and, and even smaller or as equally small on San Mar Way. On the same street side, the average street frontage is 33 feet wide. The strict application of parking standards would deprive the subject property of privileges enjoyed by other properties in the vicinity and under identical zone classification. Staff reviewed characteristics and lot dimensions of the adjacent 16 properties. 208 Fanmar Way is the smallest among those observed with one of the narrowest street widths. Only six of the 16 of properties observed appear to meet both the minimum parking space dimension and the required two feet of landscaping. Grant of a variance would not constitute a grant of special privilege because less than half of the neighborhood meets the parking dimensions and landscaping area. With that, staff recommends the Planning Commission approve the project based on the conditions and of approval and planning. Thank you. Do any commissioners have any questions of staff? No. No questions. See if I see any hands here. Seeing none, we will uh, open the public hearing and see if we get any. Well, first, uh, is the applicant present? Uh, and does the applicant wish to uh, address the commission? I have two hands raised. I'm not sure if one of them is the applicant. Um, but I, I have two hands raised. So does it tell you who they are? Yes. Who's Guard. So the, the applicant's and representative is Richard Amy. I, I don't see Richard, but. And the owner is Brooke Johnson. I don't see either one of those names raising hands at this point. Okay, so it sounds like the applicant uh, is not present and we'll just uh, go to the two hands that uh, I raised. Okay, and this is the name Guard is the name of the... Go okay. ahead. Mr. Guard or Ms. Gu Ms. Guard, are you with us? They are currently muted. Okay. Oh, here they go. Okay. Now, can you hear me? Is this Mr. Gard? Yeah, Richard Amy. Oh, oh, Richard. Yeah. Now I we have Richard. I'm a call. I'm a call using my wife's email login. It's Garden Cat. So, that okay. having been said, um, I also sent you a text message saying that I agree with, we agree with the staff report, including the variance to the parking list. Um, I would point out that the owner had a previous designer design a project which would have covered the entire second floor. And as I looked at the plans, I think it would have involved about four or five variants. I have redesigned it so the only variant is for the parking and discussed it with the staff and I think it's justified. We also designed it so that we meet the front yard setback and the rear yard setback. I've reviewed the letters written by the owner to the east, and we choose not to lower the ridge height, not to lower the second floor line, and to the walls, because it in fact needs all the current FAR type setback regulations for the addition. Um, I have suggested in text writing to you that we would accept and request an additional condition that there be a fence in the height restriction on the east property line to alleviate his concern the adjacent neighbor has of crossing their land from entering the driveway. I'll answer any other questions you may have. Could you repeat that again about the east uh, boundary, what we were going to do? I request a condition be added 
that a fence will be installed on the east property line, meeting the height restrictions, to take care of one of the concerns of the neighbor that claims um, they have been crossing their property and using part of the land parking. If, if you put a fence on the east property line, wouldn't that narrow the driveway another foot or so? Inch? No, it won't be a foot. It's going to be the smallest width fence that I can put in on the property line. No, but I mean, isn't your driveway over the property line? The, the owner's no, driveway? No, no, no. Well, the driveway is paved over the property line, but we don't claim to be using it. The dimensions shown on the site plan are to the property line not to the neighbor's driveway. Thank you. Okay, uh, anything further, Mr. Amy? Not at this time. Okay, we'll give you a chance to uh, return later. So, uh, other public comment, please. Okay, Liz. Yes, we have Gordon Van Zoyden. Mr. Van Zoyden, can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. All right. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for everyone's time. Uh, and I know we have about three minutes, so we'll move along. Uh, I have read in detail the work of the Planning Commission and I listened to Richard's comments uh, and I respect Brooke's right to build the home that she has the right to build within the Capitol Building Code guidelines. Uh, I also think we have rights of, of living there for 28 years. Um, that we enjoy as well. And one of those has been the enjoyment of the view that we have looking out towards the ocean waters. Um, we have several times uh, wanted to discuss with the applicant how we might be able to come up with a compromise and ask that a couple, anywhere from three to four feet of the overall project have to be reduced so that we can continue to enjoy this view. But it's the feeling of the applicant they've met all the building code requirements and there's no need for them to do that. So I offered a letter of compromise that I submitted today. I had a conversation with Matt Warbeck this morning. After reviewing the Planning Commission's report and finding that the actual surveyed area of the applicant's lot is actually, is the actual surveyed area is less than the driveway width as it currently stands. So there's actually eight inches of our property that extends into the driveway that they now have. And even though Richard said they don't use that, there are several times that their car is actually bust right up against our driveway to the point that we've actually had damage on the flagstone that is on our driveway. So our proposal is to help to mitigate the issue that the current applicant has with the width of that driveway and honor the fact that we will release not only the eight inches that she is on our property when she parks her car, but potentially another four inches so that instead of a very limited access to her, her home, she would have a much more comfortable eight feet plus, and that would allow her to open and close her car doors more freely. Uh, in exchange for that proposal, we just ask that the slope of the top pitch of the roof be matching the bottom pitch, which is a 42512, and ask that the top pitch go from 812 to 42512, and in doing that, we think that might reduce the overall height by two feet and ask that the ceiling height be brought down on the second floor from 10 feet, perhaps down to nine or eight, so that we would get another three or four feet of clearance, which is all we really need to, uh, to enjoy the view that we have. Uh, both of these modifications wouldn't have any impact on the overall square footage. And I think if she does both of those modifications, she still has an open air high ceiling. So we think this compromise and this compromise proposal, which we tried to do in person with her, but we didn't have any success, we feel that it's a worthwhile compromise proposal. If not accepted, and I spoke about this with Matt Orbach, then I guess we do have the right to put a fence up, as was just discussed, on our property line, which would then take advantage of the eight inches that's on her driveway uh, and would reduce the width of her driveway and make it more difficult for her to open and close doors. So we're not trying to do any tactics here that are forcing, but we are trying to come up with something of both of us to enjoy the properties that we uh, would like to enjoy. And most of all, we'd like to restore the friendship that we enjoyed with the applicant for many years prior to this, and now it's been strained by these current events. 
but we really hope that we can uh, find a middle path that both of us can win from and regain that friendship that we enjoyed. Thank you, Mr. Van Zuden. Uh, any commissioners have any questions? No questions. Thank you. Mr. Roof. Any, uh, any other public comments before we give the applicant a, a chance to respond? Yes, we have one more phone in from area code 925. Okay. Hello, uh, can my name is Eric. Go. I'm a, I'm a neighbor of 208 Sandmore, and I just wanted what? to chime in that I am currently in construction under the guidance and guidelines of Capitola and their regulations. And I just want to support 208 that as long as they follow everything Capitola is asking for, that I fully support uh, what she's trying to do. I would not entertain any reduction in her wishes as long as Capitola does not do so either. Can you give us your last name for the record, please? Miller. Thank you. Thank you for your yep. comments. Okay. Uh, is, um, Mr. Amy, would you like to uh, respond at all? Mr. Amy? How do I unmute? Can you unmute? How do I unmute? We can hear You're you. You're unmuted now. Okay, thank you. Um, one of the issues is that private views in the coastal area of California are not protected. Only views are public. I'm aware of that, having been a zoning administrator in Santa Cruz many years ago, and I tried to design per the guidelines and regulations. And as I said, um, we recommend and agree with the approval with the added fence that will take care of one of the neighbor in complex. Com sorry. Okay. Thank you. With that said, I will close the public oh, hearing. Chair and Newman, um, excuse me. We yeah. we do have a written public comment for this one. Larry, can you? Is that is that for this one? Um, yep. Or for the next the, one. Yes, 208 Fanmar, Carrie Breslin. Have two, we have one for 207 Oakland. Oh, there's three public comments now in the mailbox. Oh. Really? And oh, okay. There was an yeah, sorry. A, and. Richard Amy has already spoken, so um, just the carry. Okay, I missed that. Thank, Thank you. Fresh, so, so I, will share, I will share my screen so that we can hear the. Uh, We're not seeing that. Uh, no, I, I'm, work, I'm working on it. Sorry. Oh, okay. All right. My father bought that and rebuilt it back in 1994. It was an eyesore. I say yes. The plans will only improve the street and also give my sister Brooke Johnson more room for her children. Since. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I think that uh, then does end the uh, <laughs> public hearing and I'm gonna bring it back to the commissioners and why don't we just go, I'll, I'll call out the commissioners in order. Mr. Uh, Commissioner Wilk, your thoughts? He's recused. He's recused. Commissioner Christensen? Um, I, well, the only question I have is, they're, they're a lot, the variance is covering um, the seven foot four driveway. Is that correct? Also the landscaping on the driveway, the absence of landscaping. Yeah. Okay. So, so, um, so, but they're with that variance, they would be allowed to occupy that driveway space as it's shown on the site plan at seven foot four, without the landscape being there. Is that correct? Uh, staff, do you yeah. want to respond to that? Can you hear me? Uh, I'm not so sure. I... Your question that 
would the owner be able to utilize that space as it is right now if they were going forward with this project? Um, and, and my question is, is that as it's shown on the site plan with seven foot four, they're allowed to have occupy that with their variance without that landscape that's perfectly fine up to that property line. Is that correct? That's that's what you would be approving um, in addition to the yeah. modifications in second story. Yeah. Right, exactly. That's the question. That's um that's all. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Welch. Well um, no I I'm uh I'm okay with the project. I think that um, given the condition of uh, the community we live in and Sandbar being especially the tight restricted area that I think uh, the variances to me are warranted and uh, I'm okay with the project. Commissioner Ruth? Yes, I, I have a concern with the three different roof pitches on the structure. Uh, there's the original roof pitch, there's a different pitch over the stairwell dormer and then there's a different roof pitch on the new second story addition and I would like to see the applicant change the plan so all three roof pitches match the original roof pitch. So that's a design issue um, that's right. from your standpoint? That's okay. right. And would that uh, cause you to uh, um, vote against the project? It will. Okay. All right. Anyone, before I comment, anyone want to comment on that particular point? Commissioner Welch or Commissioner Christensen? Well, I don't, I don't want to debate with a uh, fellow commissioner. We all have our views, but um, my perspective is uh, an individual designs their home the way they uh, prefer to have it built and have that view and I'm sure my roof line doesn't make everybody happy so I, I well it may not you know uh, sit with me necessarily uh, I, I think the homeowner has the right to do that so for me I'm okay with it okay I, I think um, I, I agree with TJ but um, I feel that if they've already gone through an arc and site review um they've they've evaluated the design it all meets the requirement and i don't see why we would restrict the applicant be thank you okay my comments on this are i want to for mr van zuden's benefit i want to um let him know that mr amy is correct that um we have never, and I've been 14 or 15 years on the Planning Commission, we have never turned down or modified a project uh, to protect a private view, uh, ocean view. That's just, uh, if we did that, it would be completely contradicting all our precedents and setting a new precedent. So the idea of working out some kind of compromise with the applicant, um, you can continue to do that if it's approved and that's up to you and the applicant. Um, it's not really the, for the Planning Commission to intervene in that kind of a negotiation. It's our job to evaluate the uh, application as presented to us. As far as the variances, this commission is very strict on approval of variances and the um, staff, I agree with the staff that this one meets the uh, two requirements for a variance, so I'm uh, going to support the application. Does anyone want to make a motion? I would make a motion that we go ahead and approve uh, 2 8 Fanmar um, as um, uh, stated by the staff. So with the conditions as stated. Now, um, Mr. Amy proposed a new condition of requiring a fence, uh, you, you haven't included that. I don't see any reason that we need to include that if they want to build a fence, they can. That's correct. Uh, are you wanting to include that in your motion? I am not I am not recommending move, putting that in the motion. If the neighbors want to work out that between them, that's fine. And you know, I, 
I didn't get into it when we had our discussion, but you know, the neighbor um, to the east has a, a deck on the roof, which is not something that we allow these days. And so he's got a great opportunity there. And I just hope the two of them can to work uh, with this out. So I, I would not put that fence line in there. I'll let uh, Mr. Emmy and the occupant work that out. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Okay, we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Commissioner Christensen? Aye. Commissioner Welch? Aye. Commissioner Root? No. And myself, uh, yes. So that passes three to one. And we'll move on, thank you, to 207 Oakland Avenue. And staff report, please. Chairperson, uh, I don't have to accuse myself due to proximity on this one. Okay, and we need to get uh, Commissioner Wilk back. Uh, Peter, are you with us? Uh, I am with you. I've just been unmuted. Thank you. <laughs> this is a little awkward, but we're so far so good. And Commissioner. Okay, er, uh, staff report, please, on 207 Oakland. Chair Newman, before we head into this, I'm going. The applicant is proposing oh. to modify the existing property with four residential units to a single family home with one secondary dwelling unit. The applicant is also requesting an exception to fence height limit. The property is located at 207 Oakland Avenue within the R1 zoning district. The application, I'm not sure if anyone sees that slide changing, but a delay. Do you all see the next slide? There we go. The application would convert a two-story duplex into a single-family residence, convert a 514 square foot single-family residence into a secondary dwelling unit, and convert a 601 square foot single family residence into a detached living space. The proposal includes first and second story additions to the single family residence for a net increase of 131 square feet and a total floor area ratio for all structures of 40%. The application includes the construction of two new accessory structures, a shed and a covered gateway. The existing structures at 207 Oakland Avenue, as they appear today, oops, that was the last slide. Um, each structure is non-conforming due to the encroachment into the required setback. Construction cost breakdowns were provided for each of the three residential structures, demonstrating that the modifications will not exceed 80% of fair market value. So <coughs> modifications are permissible. The property activity is also non-conforming due to the existence of four dwelling units in the R1 zone, which constitutes a multi-family activity that must be discontinued after the 50-year amortization period or September 27, 2029, unless an extension is granted by the Capitol City Council. The proposed conversion from four dwelling units to one single-family dwelling unit and a secondary dwelling unit would bring the lot activity into compliance with current zoning and negate the need for an amortization period. Parking is also considered non-conforming on this property. Um, it, does, it does provide four existing uncovered parking spaces um, along Oakland Avenue. A covered parking space is not required here even though the floor area um, alone would require it because the structural alterations do not exceed 10% of the existing gross floor area. The proposed elevation for the single family residence. Under the proposal, all three structures are matching, are matching Spanish style, featuring clay tile roof, stucco siding, and a mix of rectangular and arched windows. 
A rear second story deck will be converted into enclosed space, uh, but the second story deck facing, facing Oakland Avenue is to remain. These are the elevations for the detached living space, formerly a single family dwelling unit. And these are the proposed elevations for the secondary dwelling unit, also currently a single family dwelling unit. The Capitola Municipal Code states that the Planning Commission may approve alternative locations, height, and material for fences. The proposed location allows a maximum fence height of eight feet, provided that the top two feet of the fence be made of lattice or other open material. The applicant is requesting a fence height exception to allow a solid eight foot tall stucco wall facing Oakland Avenue. The yellow line on the aerial photo indicates the approximate location of that fence. The, the side that is per, uh, parallel, excuse me, to Oakland Avenue is the only portion that is actually eight feet. On the side there, it, is, it drops down to six feet, so that portion complies as it is. With that, staff recommends the Planning Commission approve the project based on conditions of approval and findings. Okay, any questions from the Planning Commissioners? I have a question. Staff? I have a question. Pete, Commissioner Wilk has a question. Please. So I had uh, a, a short conversation with uh, staff member Matt on this, and uh, he talked about the color board and the material board that was presented uh, as part of this application. And he said that in general, uh, we, t we tell applicants that that is not required, and yet it is uh, mentioned, I think he said item E on the master application. So my question is, and is if we wanted to more formally not require that, is that something we would need to bring up as a separate action item or a separate uh, agenda item at some future time? Or can we discuss that here? Or, or just have Katie change it? What, what's the proper procedure for that? Uh, I think the so you're asking the staff what our general procedure is or should be regarding uh, materials and color boards. Yes, and what's the proper procedure to change it uh, if we wished to? Katie, do you want to respond to that? I will respond to that. Um, we could put that on a future agenda as an item to be discussed. We could talk about what we do require for submittals and including the color board and materials, but I, I don't think it would be appropriate to get direction on that during um, a public hearing on a specific application. I have a comment. Please. Yeah. Uh, the last item agenda, the commission members said we shouldn't get into design. And now we have a commissioner asking for a color board and material board, and isn't that getting into design? I'm asking just the opposite. I'm saying that we should remove that requirement. Oh, I misunderstood. <laughs> okay, any other questions? I do, I have a question and... So wait, uh, wait can I finish up with that question? Sure. Because yeah. I didn't think I got a clear answer as to whether or not that is actually going to be on a future agenda item. And if not, I would like to request it and I would like to know the, how do I request that formally. I'm happy to place that on the next agenda in July. You have done so. Thank you. You're welcome. That is all. Okay. So I'm gonna, I have a question or two, and uh, I think there'll be more later. You'll see where I'm going with this. But um, do we have any information regarding the tenants in the four units currently on the property? How much rent do they pay and how long have they been there? I'm asking the, uh, the staff that if so, they know. Uh, I don't have that information. Okay. Um, all right. I will come back to this later. I just wanted to see maybe the applicant can enlighten us on it if they care to. So 
If there are no other questions of staff, I'm going to open the public hearing and ask if the applicant or applicant's representative wishes to say anything. I have one hand raised from a Valerie. I don't know if that's the applicant representative. It is? Okay. Okay. And who is it? Who's that? This is Valerie Hart. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm here representing Derek Van Alstyne. I've been working on this project, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Okay. Do you know how long each of the existing tenants have been in place? That I don't know. I know that there is currently only one unit that's being occupied. And I'm not even sure if they're still being occupied. The owner would know that. We can get you that information. So they're all vacant is what you're saying? I'm not sure. I can get that information from you. I'm not sure if the owner is. I'm pretty sure he's following this council meeting, so maybe he will call in. I'm not sure if he can hear what's happening or how he could address it, but he would have that information. I don't have it. There is a hand raised, and the last name is Nielsen, and I believe that is the applicant. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any questions of Ms. Hart? If not, we'll take the next, the applicant, Mr. Nielsen. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hi. Yes, this is Jason Nielsen, the applicant. There's only one tenant that's left in the complex, and they have found another place that they're going to be moving to. So I have three of the four units are empty. And how did that happen? One has not, didn't pay rent since January. We purchased it last year. He just stopped paying rent in January. The other was a short-term renter who went to Cabrillo, and they're actually still there. They're moving out tomorrow afternoon. They own a house up in Lake Tahoe. So they signed a lease that ended at the end of this last month, and they requested it extended to the end of this week. And then, yeah, there's one unit that's still occupied, and they are moving out within the next couple weeks. What do the units rent for? Between $2,000 and $3,000 per month. All four of them? Yes, they did. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Any further comments, Mr. Nielsen? I think he is muted. Hearing none. Yeah. There we go. Do we have any other? No. Unless you have other comments. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? We have some via email at this point. Okay. How many? Four, I believe. Okay. Can we have those? Yes, I will try and get them read by sharing a screen. Sorry, I've moved stuff out of the way. Share screen. Okay. I do not approve of fence height. Based in and previous fence height, Dicus Zion on St. John Church properties, it must be much lower. Please do not make an exception for this fence height. It looks like a fortress. Ann Greeninger, 212 Oakland Avenue, Capitola. So I will go to the next one.
I am writing regarding the permit request for 207 Oakland Avenue. I am concerned about the aesthetic design of the house. It is a large Mediterranean style house in a lovely diverse beach community. I feel the 8 foot wall surrounding the property does not complement the feel of the Depot Hill Beach community. Although we do not have a homeowners association which I feel is a benefit to the eclectic nature of our community I do feel that a design should fit the community at large. I hope that you will take this into consideration as you review the plans. Thank you. Andrea Dorman 310 Escalona Drive I live next door to 207 Oakland Avenue. I have a few problems with the design as it currently stands. One, the style of the house looks to be Mediterranean which does not fit in our neighborhood. We have beach style houses with wood and stucco siding for the most part. I see that this design is stucco but overall it looks Mediterranean and that does not fit. Two, the wall in front is way too high like a prison wall, plus the higher door entry section. I remember the church on the corner of Oakland in Escalona had major fence height restrictions so I do not see how this very tall wall makes any sense. 3. I am also concerned about if the wall is going to come down my side of the property between the two-story building and the one at the back of the property, again, this would feel like a prison wall to me. Currently there is an adequate wood fence that provides privacy. 4. The extended balcony at the back of the two-story unit is going to look directly into our spot. I have planted several trees to create privacy from the existing balcony but the proposed extension goes out too far and will intrude on our privacy without the ability to plant more trees to protect this. And let's we, we have no more uh, public comments via dial in either. Okay, so does the applicant wish to respond at all to any of the comments we've received? And that can be either Mr. Nielsen or Ms. Hart. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, um, so I think the difference, I don't, I don't have a lot of familiarity with the church, but I know it's on the, I think it's on the corner. And um, the difference between the fence location that we're talking about on this property and the fence location that I'm assuming the church was dealing with had to do with it, it being outside of the setback. The fence that we're proposing is within the, the setback, the building setback. So it's, um, it's not on the property line. It's, um, it's further back. There will be planting all around it. It's not just going to be this wall. Um, so that's my first comment regarding the height of the wall. Um, the second thing I want to note is the, the last email mentioned the balcony at the rear and that it was going to, um, it's, it's always uh, impinged on their privacy and now it's going to impinge on it more, but we're actually taking that balcony away and, and closing it. So it's not going to be overlooking the neighbor. There's not going to be, they, they won't be able to see into the neighbor's yard. There's, there's no window there. So that's that's what I'd like to say about that. Um, I'm not certain about the fence comment about the neighbor. I, couldn't, I, don't, I don't know where he's talking about. Um, the, I don't know what he's talking about, the wood fence that exists there. I'm not sure. So um, that's all. <laughs> OK, thank you. Uh -huh. We will then close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission and see if uh, what our comments are, our thoughts. We'll start with uh, Commissioner Wilk. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, I also had a concern about the eight-foot fence, knowing that we need uh, good rationale in order to uh, approve something over six feet or six feet with a, with a two-foot lattice. And, and uh, I was pleased to find out that the property line is down to six feet. So, so that the, as the applicant said, that uh, there really, really isn't a, a property line fence or what you would consider a, a normal fence condition um, that we are worried about here. I mean, the, the eight-foot portion is 25 feet set back. So to me, that's basically part of the house. Um, 
So to me, the location, the fact that it's front-facing and set back so far, to me, is enough rationale to grant that waiver. Beyond that, I appreciate the applicant spending their hard-earned investment in our city. That's all. Commissioner Christensen? I like the layout of this, of what they're doing to this property. I think that they're taking kind of a really somewhat sterile apartment environment and turning it into a really nice courtyard. I can appreciate the wall in front, being that you enter into the courtyard and you seem to have a really nice area where it's a communal environment for all the occupants on the property. As far as the exception of the fence, with consideration of what Commissioner Wilk was saying, with it being set back 25 feet, I can see that as being a bit different than providing an exception if it was on the property line. But I don't know. I'm a little hesitant to set that type of precedent because I know that moving forward, people want to build eight-foot fences all the time. And a six-foot fence really seemed to make much of a difference if they were to just provide a six-foot wall there instead of an eight-foot fence or an eight-foot wall or a six-foot fence with a ladder. That's my overall comment, but I don't necessarily have any questions, Julie. Commissioner Ruth? Yeah, well, I think it's obvious the property as it stands today is in really bad shape. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I'm just wondering if you could comment on that. Yeah, and I think that it's kind of a rundown condition for a long time. And I think that the work that needs to be done to repair it needs to be done sooner than later. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a much needed workover. And I think that the city should have done a
the Mellow Act doesn't technically apply, but it also says it establishes minimum requirements for housing within the coastal zone. Then there are other parts of our um, government code, and I'll just quote one portion here that says, the availability of housing is of vital statewide importance and the early attainment of decent housing and a suitable living environment for every Californian is a priority of the highest order. So we have all kinds of programs and reallocations in our uh, community to try to create housing units. And what we have here are four, in my opinion, very decent looking housing units that are being converted into a compound for one family. Um, so we're losing, we're losing four units and the family's getting uh, something that from a design standpoint, some people object to, but I object to from the standpoint of possible loss of uh, housing stock in the community. I don't know what to do about that. It's more of a city council issue, I suppose, but um, I really have a hard time. I mean, last week we uh, experienced throughout the country a lot of dissatisfaction in the country. Part of it was over racial justice, but a lot of it was over economic uh, disparities. And that's, that's kind of what this uh, symbolizes here, is an individual's coming in and basically four, four units are being lost for and for one family that has uh, obviously a lot more uh, economic uh, wherewithal. And as I, I'm just concerned about that. I think our city council should look into uh, some changes in our ordinances to uh, control um, this type of gentrification of the community. So, I'd be interested to hear if that resonates with anyone else. I can respond to that. This is Commissioner Wilk. Um, I had that question as well in terms of uh, the number of units being lost and and, and why uh, you know what the rationale is, and it was given the response that well they were going to have to do it anyway because it's it's not to code currently. So that by 2029, they have to they have to make a modification to the to the living space anyway, unless unless they anticipate that whoever's on the planning commission in 2029 gives them an, an extension on their variance. Uh, that would be the city council, not the planning commission. Okay. Well, we don't know who's going to be there either. Um, I, I guess my concern is, would be. For the property owner, who, um, who who perhaps if they knew ahead of time that this was an uh, objection or that the city had an ordinance against this, um, but for us to turn this down because um, because we anticipate this, the city council should do something about um, uh, low affordable housing. Um, I, I don't think that's our role. And so I, I think we should uh, we should allow them to follow the rules and uh, not turn them down as, as long as they are following the rules. With regards to um, the style, um, I don't know that there is a style in Capitola. I know that Casa Blanca is a, is right on the corner of Depot Hill, and that Spanish style. I think if you walk down. El Salto and go down some of the side roads there, you'll see some Mediterranean houses. Um, so it may not be consistent with the housing on that street, but I, I would be uh, reluctant to say it doesn't fit in the community at large. So um, so I, I, in fact, will make a motion to approve um, the project um, as presented by staff uh, based on the conditions and, and findings uh, presented by staff. Let me just respond to that issue of uh, the um, uh, requirement that they conform over 50 years to the zoning. So in 1988, 
the ordinance allows an applicant or a property owner to get an extension. In 1988, that's 32 years ago, they applied for an extension, and that was denied at that time. But the 32 years is a long time, and things have changed a lot. And the policy, the housing policy in this state has changed a lot in 32 years. And so I think it trumps the amortization rules that existed back then. And I think the city council should and would grant an extension if they applied for it. And as far as purchasing the property without any awareness of the possibility that housing, the loss of housing stock is a concern, I think that it's been pretty available or well known to anyone who wanted to know that there's a critical housing shortage and that the coastal zone, coastal commission has a very strong policy of preserving affordable housing within the coastal zone. So I think that they should not have been taken by surprise. Anyway, anyone else? Well, we do. We have a motion on the table. We have a motion. Do we have a second? A second. We have a second from Commissioner Christensen. Do we have any further discussion? And the motion includes the wall as designed, I gather. As proposed. Yes. Okay. So no further discussion. We'll have a roll call vote. Commissioner Wilk? Aye. Commissioner Christensen? Aye. Commissioner Ruth? No. And chairman votes no. So that application is denied. And of course, there's an opportunity to appeal to the city council. And we can talk later in the agenda about whether anything else could or should be done in this with regard to my comments. Chair Newman, would you, does anyone want to entertain a second motion before we, that motion died and would be considered a denial. But if there's any other motions, you have the opportunity. Anyone else want to make a motion? Hearing none. I have a motion to approve with applicants. So the motion is to approve the application as presented without any, with all the conditions except no fence variance allowed. Is that the idea? Yeah. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Does that make sense? Everyone? I'll say that Commissioner Wilk. Okay. Commissioner Wilk seconds. Any further comments on that motion? I have a question. So does that also include the six foot wall along the side? That's perfectly legal. That, yes, that includes the six foot fence along the side. So let me understand. I mean, unless that's, is that a made point of contention? Go ahead. Point of clarification. This is Peter Wilk. My understanding of your motion was just to not approve the variance, therefore making the fence or wall come down to six feet and therefore be within regulation. Is that correct? Yes, that's my, that was my intention. Does that second still stand? And that second still stands then. Okay. Any, Commissioner Ruth, did you have any further questions about the motion? No. Okay. Roll call. Commissioner Wilk. Aye. Commissioner Christensen. Aye. Commissioner Ruth. No. And the chairman votes no. Any other motions? Hearing none, we'll probably hear more about this application 
at the city council level but at this point that's the end of this item and we'll move on to the next public hearing which is 203 Esplanade do we have a staff report please I do Sean can you take yours off thank you yeah I'm gonna get TJ back here I'm oh. back. you're back okay now for the staff report okay thank you chair Newman uh, tonight the applicant at 203 Esplanade is requesting a conditional use permit and design permit for a takeout window at Zelda's restaurant uh, in the central village zone district Zelda's restaurant is located on the Esplanade adjacent to Tacos Moreno and Mai Tai Beach. Zelda's is unique in that the parcel wraps around the parcel of Tacos Moreno uh, with a restaurant on the west side and a large outdoor dining deck located on the east side, directly adjacent to the Capitola Beach, as shown here. The applicant is requesting approval of a conditional use permit for a takeout window along the front facade of the building adjacent to the front door, shown here in yellow. The proposal includes replacing the existing three foot eight by three foot eight picture window with a single hung double pane Tuscany window of the exact same proportion. The window is located in front of the existing interior coffee bar. Uh, the owner plans to serve coffee beverages, some grab and go items, as well as some items off of their main menu. A takeout window use in the central village requires a conditional use permit. The proposed takeout window complies with the considerations in the capital and municipal code and circulation mitigation measures and the trash impact fee have been included in the conditions of approval. The structure of 203 Esplanade is also historic and any modification to a historic structure requires a conditional use permit as well. Staff has reviewed the proposed project and determined that the proposed takeout window complies with the Secretary of the Interior standard. I would point out as well and uh, related to a commissioner comment on the phone earlier um, that uh, they were informed that there will be uh, that there would be these uh, temporary use permits being issued for uh, takeout windows in the village and they still wish to proceed with this uh, application because they would like to have this window there permanently. So with that, the staff recommends that the Planning Commission review and approve application uh, number 20-0160 subject to the conditions and findings. Anyone have any questions of the staff? Uh, just a, a comment, this is Commissioner Root. Uh, when we approved, was it 403 Capitol Avenue next to the firehouse? One of the conditions I asked for was that they uh, be required to provide a trash receptacle according to whatever the city design requirements were for those. And uh, so I'd like to see that also for this takeout window. Okay, noted. I have a question. This is Commissioner. Yes, the question is uh, one of timing. So um, my understanding is that the parking spaces uh, are all along the Esplanade, including in front of this proposed takeout window, are temporarily blocked off from automobiles. And so therefore, at least during the COVID crisis, if this uh, takeout window was in place and there was a line of people there because of the um, parking spaces being blocked off there would continue to be plenty of space for pedestrian clearance around the takeout window is that correct yes thank you Can I? Um, Any other questions? Go ahead. I'd like to just add uh, just some clarification that under condition of approval number two for the future trash impact fee, due to the COVID 19 uh, current pandemic, we the condition was placed on this application that the 
annual trash impact fee would take place one year after the shelter in place has been lifted, just to provide some economic relief to um, one of our longstanding businesses in the village. So if the addition, additional condition were to be added regarding the trash receptacle, I would suggest you combine that with condition number two and allow one year prior to requiring that installment. Okay, Commissioner Ruff, I would agree with that. Okay. One more point of clarification. This is Commissioner Wilf again. I'm recalling um, when uh, Tacos Moreno used to be a different business and there was a request for a takeout window there, which was eventually approved, but there was a lot of comments and concerns that a takeout window would be blocking pedestrian traffic. And I was wondering how we got around that concern. Do you have any memory of that, uh, Katie? Um, I, I do recall with that application, there was a lot of concern about the trash receptacles. Um, in terms of queuing, I, I don't recall that being an issue next door with Tacos Moreno's. Um, and I, with this application, they have said the queuing will be um, along the window frontage and could wrap um, where there's an entryway to the beach as well, if, if it backed up that far. Okay, I may, may be misremembering. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, any other questions? If not, we will open the public hearing. And is, does the applicant have a representative? The applicant. I believe the applicant has her hand raised, but we'll allow to talk. Jill? Hey, thank you. Yes. Hello? Yes. Um, yeah, I just wanted to address, we do have um, a very large trash receptacle already on the um, deck. It's like housed in like a little house type thing. There's two really large garbages in there currently. Can you give us your name for the record, please? Jill Ely. Thank you. Okay, anything else you'd like to uh, address? Um, not necessarily. I just wanted to mention that I had already applied before City Council temporary one, and rather than get a temporary one and later decide it is something I want to keep, I just decided to keep going at this time. That said, I have no idea, um, you know, what's going to come of it. It was just something that, due to the COVID, that we thought would be helpful during this time with, uh, you know, less tables. Okay. Well, you might as well keep going. Exactly. Don't this far. <laughs> okay. Um, Jill, do can we you have any other public comments, Mr. Jill? Jill, could you clarify if that's the dumpsters that are enclosed, or do you have a, a an accessible trash can for the public? Well, we have. We probably have between the restaurant, like on the between the restaurant and the deck, I think we keep anywhere from four to six garbage cans from ours and, re and recycling receptacles in addition to the dumpsters. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, this, commission, this commissioner, uh, Ms. Ely, but those garbage cans aren't accessible by the public, are they? Yes. Are they, what, yes. through the walk? Through the walkway, the breezeway, or where we are use, they? They're not in front uh, of the staff. There is a, several, a couple of them right next to the hostess podium, and then there's generally some like um, I don't know how to explain. It. Like next to where we there's like a wood there's like a wood enclosure that we actually keep our coolers in for beer, and right next to there we also have another we have two receptacles. Okay, but for. My point, my, yeah, my point would be for people taking out food on this sidewalk, because that's where the window's facing, uh, and then walking down the sidewalk, they aren't really accessing those those cans. No, yes, we know. They would have to be from, like, maybe the walkway yeah. or going from, you know, to the beach. If they were going right. to, through the restaurant to the beach, then, yeah, we keep lots of garbages right back there. Yeah. And looking at the public that's comment... Public comment email, there is none at this time. Someone has asked if we can put the picture up. Picture of, sorry, is it have a comment or a picture of the site? 
the comment just says, the chat, can we put the picture up site? Once on site. I think that was Kayla saying that he could do that. Oh. We so desire. I see. Nick, can I ask you a quick question? Yes, go ahead. I'm sorry, Commissioner Ruth, I apologize. No problem. The, you're, you're requesting that the condition be added that there's a public trash can provided by the city on that, that, on the public access way on the Esplanade, is that right? Actually, it's provided by the restaurant somewhere where it's accessible to the public out towards the sidewalk. Yeah, we would have a problem. Okay, so just like a movable trash can. Yeah, according to whatever design. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, you know, we've heard that the city's been working on this design for trash cans now for two years. It's time to come up with it, with an answer. So, so whatever, whatever design the city comes up with, that they would provide a trash can that reflects that design. Got it. Yeah, so Commissioner Christensen, I can clarify. Nick was, Commissioner Ruth was referring to the to-go pizzeria. Uh, where a condition was included for the applicant to provide funding for a trash receptacle to the city, and then the city would put a public trash receptacle of the design Commissioner Ruth was describing somewhere in the village just to help with the additional trash created by the new take out. Thanks for clarifying. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's just, and that's on top of, um, excuse me, that was on, uh, this is directly to, you, um, uh, Matt, but I would, so that's on top of the, the requirement of um, the fees, the, the trash fee? Yes, I, I believe there's a yearly a trash DIA fee. trash fee and then there's a one-time receptacle fee. Okay. If I remember, it's something like $800 for a one-time fee to the public works. Okay. Okay, do we have any okay. other, uh, excuse me? No, go ahead. Okay, any other public comments? It looks like the applicant has um, her hand up and maybe can provide some feedback on. Okay. Um, oh, was that from? Ms. Ely. It was, this is still, it was up from before, but I don't have any um, anything else to say and I have no problem with any of the requirements for garbage and receptacles or any fees due. Okay, thank you. We'll close the public hearing and see if the commissioners have any comments. We'll start with Commissioner Welch. I have no comments. Uh, I'm in favor of the project. Commissioner Ruth? No comments. Commissioner Christensen? Um, no comments. I support um, with you. Commissioner Welch? No comment. Do we have a motion? Move approval. Do we have a second? Second. A second. Second. Uh, so I, was that a, a motion to approve with your trash receptacle addition as part of condition number two? Correct. Okay. Clarification is so my understanding was that. Um, the uh, there was going to be no trash uh, requirements during the COVID-19 based on Katie mentioning that we wanted to give the restaurant tours a break so are you suggesting that that recommendation not be um, implemented but rather we have that trash um, fee implemented immediately or after the COVID? Uh, this Commissioner, are you addressing me, Commissioner Will? I am, I'm trying to understand uh, the motion. No, I, I would leave that up to staff. If, if they want to defer the collection of the fee, that's, I don't have a problem with that. Thank you. Okay, there was some confusion on the second here. I'm not sure for the purposes of our um, secretary. I think it was Commissioner Welch got in first with the second. I would so, second, and I would also uh, second the uh, updated motion with Nick's uh, request on the trash. So condition number two. 
Okay, so the motion to repeat it before we vote is, is to approve the application uh, with the conditions as stated by the staff plus the uh, trash condition as stated by Commissioner Root. Uh, roll call vote, Commissioner Wilk? Aye. Commissioner Christensen? Aye. Commissioner Welch? Aye. Commissioner Root? Aye. And chair votes aye, and so that passes unanimously. And thank you. We'll move on to our last public hearing, which is 1400 Wharf Road. Uh, and this is for, I can find it here, a design permit, conditional use permit, and initial initial study mitigated negative declaration for the rehabilitation and repair of the historic Capitola Wharf located within the public facilities zoning district. Staff report, please. Thank you, Chair Newman. Uh, the city of Capitola is proposing a 7,400 square foot widening of the existing Capitola Wharf, a new seven, uh, sorry, 400 square foot restroom facility to replace the existing restroom facility on the wharf, a new restroom facility at the base of the wharf, and a new security gate and modifications to the wharf entrance gates and trestle circulation. Capital Wharf was constructed in 1857 and has been modified, repaired, and rebuilt multiple times. Uh, uses for the wharf varied during its early existence, but since the 1920s it has been utilized for sport fishing and recreation mainly. In 1999, the Capitola City Council adopted the Historic Structures List, which identified Capital Wharf as a historic structure. The wharf begins at the terminus of Wharf Road and spans approximately 866 feet in length. The wharf is publicly accessed by foot travel, but is also accessed by motor vehicles, primarily for handicap access and boat launching. The wharf contains several small structures, including two commercial structures, a restroom facility, a boat lift, and an entrance gate. The applicant is proposing to widen the existing 20-foot wide trestle by 16 feet for a total width of 36 feet. The expanded portion would match the initial 85 feet of the trestle. The expansion would increase the work area by approximately 7,400 square feet, include the separation of travel for pedestrians and vehicles, and would utilize wooden materials compatible with the existing design. The expansion would be supported by 120 new fiberglass piles with polyethylene steel. The proposal also includes a new metal security gate situated before the wharf restaurant and adjacent structures and modifications to the existing decorative en entrance gate. The new metal security gate and decorative entrance gate will match the existing ones, but span the width of the expanded wharf. The proposal also includes a new bathroom at the foot of the wharf and a replacement of the existing bathroom facility behind the restaurant. Initial design elements uh, for the new and replacement bathroom facilities include vertical wood, wooden bathroom siding with stainless steel metal roof and doors. The final bathroom design will maintain a utilitarian aesthetic that is differentiated from the historic elements of the work itself. The final design, scale, and materials for the prefabricated restrooms, altered entrance gates, and security gates, as well as the texture and finish of the proposed exterior of the new piles and repair piles, are subject to review and approval by the Community Development Director. This is included in condition of approval number two. A conditional use permit is required for alterations to historic resources. The proposed project was reviewed by architectural historian Leslie Gill, who determined that the proposed wharf rehabilitation, additions, and alterations have been designed to comply as well as feasible with the standard, uh, and that with the recommended review of the design elements that I just mentioned previously, um, prior to construction, the proposal is substantially compatible with the Secretary of the Interior's standard. <laughs> The uh, initial study and mitigated negative declaration prepared by Moffitt and Nickel determined that the proposed project could result in potentially significant effects on biological resources, cultural resources, hydrology and water quality, and noise, but that potential impacts could be reduced to less than significant with mitigation measures. The mitigation monitoring and reporting program was prepared for the project in order to mitigate those environmental impacts to a less than significant level. A notice of intent to adopt a mitigated negative declaration was circulated for a 30-day public review period between April 9th and May 9th of 2020. Comments were received from the California Department of Fish and Wildlife and the California Coastal Commission. 
mitigated negative declaration and mitigation monitoring and reporting program were then modified to address the concerns raised in those comments. I would point out with this as well, um, uh, if anyone noticed that this uh, does not include a coastal <coughs> development permit because the war falls in the jurisdiction of the Coastal Commission. So you will just be approving the conditional use permit, design permit, and initial study and mitigated negative declaration, not the coastal development permit. Any questions of staff, please? This is Commissioner Wilk. I have several questions. So my first question is um, basically one of, of, of process uh, in the history. Like, so this wharf has obviously been a huge deal, and I know it went to the city council, and they were going to raise it six feet and expand it and change the buildings, and and then oh, then maybe that was going to be a phase two thing. Um, and when I discussed this in, with staff, they Matt mentioned that uh, that this this part doesn't even go back to the city council, so I'm I'm just confused at what what we're approving here. Is this is this the is this the final step, or is it there's nothing going to go back to city council? This is it. We're just approving this thing, or we're going to go through this whole thing again when you say the coastal commission permit is required or the request is. Does staff want to address that? I am not familiar with the previous uh, attempts to do the, the higher work and the full redesign. Um, the applicant, uh, which is actually a staff member as well, I believe is on the line. So uh, Kay Lash and the from the Public Works Department might be able to give a little bit more background on the history of how this developed and how they arrived at this particular design. Um, but yes, in, in terms of the conditional use permit and the design permit and the initial study and negative declaration for the scope of the project as described for you tonight, uh, this is the final step. They will also need to get that coastal development permit from the Coastal Commission, but that is outside of our jurisdiction. Steve Jesper, Public Works Director, has his hand raised as well if you'd like to hear from him. Okay, yeah. well, well, yeah, let's get to... Uh, Oh, go ahead. You want to answer that question, or we're going to have general comments, Steve, uh, shortly. I think he'll he can give you an update on whether what steps are required for uh, the contract okay. and going to city council. Yeah, I can. Can you guys hear me? This is Kailash. Yes. Um, so, Peter, to address your process question about council approval, so you guys would be approving the mitigated negative negative declaration at this stage and allow us to uh, submit our notice of determination tomorrow to the uh, county assessor's office. But then what happens next, before we went up, before we would go to construction on this, we would have to go back to council to pre present the project that we're putting out for, to bid. So there would be one more point at which council would see this. Um, and as far as uh, addressing your question about the different design that were brought to council over the course of you know a number of meetings um, over the last couple of years, we were uh, we were we put, at one stage we did present a number of different options for council to review. Um, at that point, we kind of narrowed down the different options and the different um, kind of intentions of those options with with the idea one of which you did allude to with phasing having a higher a higher wharf at a later time. Uh, looking at the cost of that, that that ended up putting us into a, a design or a construction cost of well over $15 million, which is well outside of what our our budget was. And so, uh, with with that knowledge, then we uh, designed the project as it is now. That allows for a future raising of the wharf at, at, a, at a later time. But right now, this project. Uh, includes just the existing uh, renovating the wharf at the existing height. Thank you. Thank you. Any other, Peter, you had some more questions? I, I do. Um, I know that there's going to be pile driving and the pile driving noise is a concern. The, uh, I was wondering if there was any uh, negotiation with, uh, uh, with staff uh, and the applicant uh, about uh, constricting the time of, of that pile driving um, other than the standard 
you know, noise, windows. I, I can speak to that a little bit. One, that the noise, the topic of noise was a concern in, in the document. We did receive some comments on that. Um, as a res uh, to, to address that, we've included a mitigation measure to have, um, it's, a, it's a kind of a, a, a buffer situation where they're able to, the, the strikes are, are muffled slightly by adding um, their, what are they called? The, the type of board that they put in the place so when the, the hammer strikes the, the pile itself, uh, it doesn't make as much noise. And alternatively, there's also the ability to use a vibratory hammer instead of a, a striking hammer. So there will be the option of, of using both. Um, in practice, um, after going through the most recent uh, repair of the emergency repair of the two piles that were broken during at the at, on New Year's this year, uh, we found that the fiberglass piles, which we were intending to utilize, uh, went in fairly smoothly and didn't didn't require as many strikes as we had initially intended or thought they might take. And so, our our we're hopeful that the remaining piles that we're planning to install would go the same way. Um, as far as addressing the timing of the noise, we we currently have it in there just to our, our, con our standard construction window times. Um, and I, uh, I don't know if we've really thought about changing that. I don't think we've really, I, I guess, thought about what that might be. Would you have recommendations on what you're, you're proposing there? Yeah. Is, in the standard window, it starts at 8 a.m. Is that is that correct? And that includes Saturday. So that's true. Actually, um, our public works construction window is Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. I think planning has a, a larger window that allows for construction activities to take place. So our intentions were to have this follow our standard public works construction window of 8 to 5, and with the ability to provide um, flexibility for earlier or later times if we if we either A, have the ability to work during low tide conditions, which is one of the uh, requests of some of the permitting agencies, or if there's any reason why we would have to go into the weekend if there, if there was just an outlier reason that we needed to continue work. But otherwise, uh, the, the goal would be to complete the work during our, our normal eight to five construction window. Yeah, I, I was just thinking there might be complaints if it starts directly at eight. Um, but we can discuss that later. Okay, that's and that's all my questions. Thank you. Hello. Hello. It looks like um, Commissioner Welch has yeah. his hand up. I, I did receive a message from, from Commissioner Welch about the timing and funding for the project, um, and I, I can address that. The Right now, we, so we're at stage of, of completing our CEQA permitting process, but we still have to go through the Regional Water, Water Quality Control Board, the U.S. Uh, Fish and Wildlife Service, Army Corps of Engineers, and the National Marine Sanctuary, and the Co uh, Coastal Development Permit. So. Um, upon completion of our CEQA process, to, if, if that would be completed today, we would then init, we, we submitted our Fish and Wildlife Service um, or Army Corps of Engineers permit application today as well, with the uh, expected timeline of being about one year to have actual permits in hand to complete the work. So that would put us at uh, being able to initiate construction in the fall winter of 2021. And as far as funding goes, right now we are, the reason why we advanced the CEQA process is we uh, were, uh, the, the state budget included $1.9 million toward capital to help us with this work. But in order for them to contract with us, we needed to complete our CEQA process. So that's why we advanced the CEQA permitting process in, in front of any of the other permits. Um, with that 1.9 million, that would add to what we had initially intended to use from Measure F. And at this point, because of the uh, current state of the economy as a result of, of the COVID crisis, there's a little bit of uncertainty as far as how much we will be able to commit from the Measure F funds to the project. 
So we're, it's, it's a, that part is not 100% clear as far as where, I think the, the city budget is, is still getting looked at more closely. So uh, with, the, with the state money, we would be able to accomplish a, a decent amount of the project. And then we would have to determine with council how much more would be funded and if we would have to then uh, phase the project um, so that we wouldn't be addressing each element at the same time. Thanks, Kailash. That really was uh, my questions and, and concerns, um, especially around this time when our city's taking such big hits. And you know that personally as a staff person, that um, hopefully the timeline to start doing the building will be in a time when we can uh, have a little more funding in the city to be able to take care of our own folks in the house before we start doing capital improvement projects. So thank you. Is Chair Newman still on the line? Chair Newman, we cannot hear you. Um, I would suggest that Vice Chair Ruth move to public comment. Okay, this is Commissioner Ruth. Uh, do we have any public comments? I don't see any hands raised at this time. Let me see if we have any emails. Um, we have not received any emails on this item. Okay, with that then we will close the public portion and bring it back to the commission for comments. Uh, Commissioner Wilkes. Yeah, my only comment was, uh, was about the noise um, starting it, the pile driving specifically starting early, but you know, I guess I don't wanna bring that up into uh, into a, a motion or a, a modification of the recommendation. So um, I don't have any further comments or concerns with this proposal. Okay. Commissioner Christensen? I don't have any um, comments. I, I think I support this project. I think it's a great, I think the, the, um, uh, the, the work needs some major Okay. Commissioner Welch? No, no further comments. I'm uh, excited about the new bathrooms and uh, the new wharf being protected, so uh, I'm in favor of it. Okay. Chairman Newman, have you returned? Okay, not here, Chairman Newman. I just have some questions. Uh, Katie, can you tell me what the expected life of those portable restrooms are? I cannot. Maybe um, Steve Jesberg could speak to that, possibly, or Kalosh. I, I I'm not sure. Okay, I, I can adjust that. Thank you. So our, you know, it, overall the 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 wharf being a, pro, a, a a coastal structure, um, everything along the coast is definitely subject to lots of weathering. Um, our 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 design life that we're you know shooting for on this is a you know with a minimum of 20 years for for you know without major rehabilitation um, with these portable restrooms i think that would be you know that's kind of what our expectation would be that that would be would be in line with that so they would last for a good amount of time needing some type of periodic maintenance over that 20 year lifespan okay well you know earlier i mentioned the city's lost its way when it comes to enhancing the character or protecting the character of our community. And I think these restrooms are probably a prime example of that. And I would hope that we could consider them a temporary use and come up with a design that's uh, going to contribute something to the character of the wharf and the character of our community. And I'm not sure how I would put that into a condition or a direction, but I, I don't think we should live for 20 years with that, uh, with those portable restrooms that do nothing to enhance the character of the, of the village. So that comment also, I would like to see a condition that guarantees 
public access to fishing on both sides of the war and also a condition that no new commercial uses be allowed between the foot of the wharf and the bait shop. Sure, this is Kailash again. So I think um, we're, we're along with the same line of thinking there. Um, our, our intention was not to eliminate uh, fishing on the, I guess that would be the north side of the wharf. Um, that, you know, the use as it is today, we would like that to continue as it is. We, we weren't intending to change the overall use of the wharf. The reason for that widening is primarily to provide structural enhancement. And then we saw that also as an opportunity to then provide a little bit of separation between vehicle and pedestrian traffic. We're, we aren't increasing the, the vehicular capacity at the end of the wharf, so we don't anticipate in, increased vehicle trips compared to what we're seeing today. It's just a, a matter to provide a little bit more, uh, you know, better user experience so that when there are delivery trucks going out to those um, businesses that, you know, uh, pedestrians can just easily be off to the side. Um, and then I wanted to bring up one point for about the noise. We do have a condition to have a soft start for those for the pile driving impacts, and that's part of one of our mitigation measures that is, as it is. So we would slowly be ramping up to pile driving in the morning in the morning, so it wouldn't immediately start at, at full strength. Good. Good. Okay, Chairman Newman, you're back. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, well, it's amazing. <laughs> I'm totally bewildered by this. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, do we have any other public comment? Yeah, we've gone through the public comment and closed the public portion. Okay. Well, do we have a motion? Uh, can I get a clarification first? Because Commissioner Ruth mentioned a, a, a lot of motions, but he was having trouble with specifically the issue on the bathrooms. I'd like to give him some support on that, since this is a design that the city is responsible for. I'm not all that thrilled with those bathrooms either, especially if they're going to last 20 years, but I also am not sure how to structure a motion that would require those to be redesigned like to chime in here. I, I believe we have a condition in there now because because we weren't able to have final design plans for the bathroom uh, facilities. What we've used there is, is representative of the type of bathroom facility we would want to have where that would be single use uh, bathrooms that wouldn't would have, you know, individually closing doors rather than a, a, like a, a larger communal bathroom. So that, that is one of the conditions that we had in there that when, when uh, Matt was speaking to this, that is subject to the community development director's approval at the end. And that was because it, it, at the stage we're at now in design, we didn't have that fully flushed out. So that's no, number two. No, no pun intended. Go ahead. <laughs> and so the intention there is to maintain the character of the building. And, and you know, that was feedback that we received during our public uh, hearings and and our and all throughout the process. So I I, I agree with Commissioner Ruth's comment there, and, and that is something that we would want to include. Uh, I'm not sure that I understand what you mean when you said maintain the character of the buildings. That mean you maintain the buildings as proposed? That was not my that was not the direction of my comment. My comment was to replace those at some point in the near future with a structure that is more closely aligned and represents the character of Capitola, not just a square box. Well, this is a design permit, so I think if we approve this, we approve that current design. I don't know how we uh, approve it without with, with having them come back with a new design. Well, technically, that's actually included as condition two because uh, the community development director would still need to approve the final design, scale, and materials for the restrooms. 
So there is, it isn't actually an approval of final design at this point that you're approving the project with um, the community development director having the final say on that design. Well, is, is that what commissioners want to do? Can we, can we change that uh, condition so the final design is brought back to the planning commission? I believe so. Okay, I'd like to I'd like to see that incorporated into that condition, and, and I'd like to I'd like to put a life on those portable bathrooms. Uh, I don't want to see them for 20 years. I I would say within three years that the city return with a design for permanent restrooms out there. Well, the only question I have about that is what if they don't? guessing if we make it as a condition and a direction, they they have to unless they ignore it. Okay, do you want to make a motion with those uh, changes? Okay, let me try one here. Okay, I would move approval of the of the uh, design. Con Is it a concept? Of the conditional use permit and the design permit with an added condition that the uh, portable restrooms uh, be established out there no longer than three years and a design that reflects uh, a more, it's so hard to do, the character of the village uh, for a permanent restroom be completed within three years Hopefully staff can reword that so it makes sense. And uh, I'd also like to add a condition that no new commercial uh, structures or enterprises are allowed between the foot of the wharf and the uh, first commercial building that currently exists. Can you clarify the part about the design of the bathroom? Do you want to, to come back to the planning commission or? Yes. Okay. Does everyone understand that motion? Yes. Do we have a second? Second. Commissioner Wilk. Okay. Do we have any discussion? Could could I bring up? Um, I, I don't. I just want to, and, and maybe Steve Jesberg can also chime in. But in terms of budget this year, we've just gone through a major cut to spending within the city. And I'm not sure what the permanent bathrooms would cost versus these temporary bathrooms, but three years, I'm, I'm not sure where we'll be in our recovery from the current pandemic. And just as staff and knowing what we've been going through with the budget cuts, I just want to voice concern. Um, okay. The motion was to, Katie, the motion was to come back with the design within three years. Was it to replace them within three years? Okay. and. Well, that's a little vague to me, but uh, so let me try and restate the motion and see if it's uh, acceptable to the. Did we get a second? Yeah, we did get a second. It's a motion to approve the design permit, conditional use permit, and, and initial study mix mitigated negative declaration for the rehabilitation and repair of the historic capital award with the conditions proposed by staff except that there shall be no new buildings and the uh, new part the addition to the wharf the temporary restrooms are approved for a period of three years and the the um, city the, the planning commission will need to approve the final design of the bathroom. Okay, just Commissioner Newman, so we also one, have one. Uh, Steve Jesberg with his hand up as an attendee. First, let's first Commissioner Ruth, and then we'll have Ms. Uh, Mr. Jesberg. Okay, it, it wouldn't be commercial. It wouldn't be buildings between the restroom and the first uh, base of the bait shop. It'd be no commercial uses. 
no commercial use for the association with that name. Mr. Jesper, do you want to say something? Good evening, Commissioners. Thanks for uh, listening in. Um, yeah, I wanted to clarify that it was commercial uses because we will be building one of these restrooms between the end of the wharf and the first commercial building. Regarding the restrooms, um, question for uh, Commissioner Ruth is, these buildings are, are not temporary, they're modular. It just means they're made off site and then brought in. We can modify, we can design any exterior we want with those. And I'm wondering if we can come back with design options for these modular buildings rather than um, you know, redesigning and rebuilding a building from scratch. Uh, there is certain advantages uh, to using the modular building. I think it'll have the same life as another building, but we can come back with other facades that um, can address perhaps your design concern, and that's something we could do uh, with the initial project, and if that would be satisfactory. Mr. Jesper, I don't think that the motion um, really specifies how you go about designing the restroom. It's just that it has to be approved by the Planning Commission rather than the staff. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's correct. And I think the reality is that three years down the road, for one reason or another, economic distress or, or otherwise, um, there has to be a delay. Uh, I'm sure that the Planning Commission and the City Council at that time would extend the temporary use if necessary. So, with that Wait, said... So I'm confused. This is Commissioner Wilk. Um, Steve managed to confuse me. So, I thought what he said is that he would like approval of the modular design as staff proposed, but that staff would then go ahead and present at some point different facades that um, that I guess staff would approve or maybe he would bring back before us as opposed to redoing it in three years. And I'm not sure what the motion is requiring. Which of those? I this is Commissioner Ruth. Uh, my interpretation is there are various designs that are available through the company that uh, offers the prefab restrooms and that Steve was going to produce some various designs for the Planning Commission to peruse and possibly approve one. And so by approving this motion, we are assuming that there will be another approval for restroom design? I, That's the way I understand it. I, I That's think the way I intend it. What I'm hearing is you would move forward tonight with the design permit, conditional use permit, and the initial study, but the condition number two would change that the final bathroom design would have to come back to the Planning Commission before being Got it. Built. Thank you. Thanks for making it simple, Kate. <laughs> yeah, thank you. That's why we have staff. <laughs> uh, Commissioner Will. Um, so that so I seconded it, so I agree with all of that stuff. Are you asking me for a vote? Yeah, we're at the roll call now. Aye. Commissioner Christensen. Aye. Commissioner Welch. Aye. Commissioner Ruth. Aye. And Chairman also is unanimous. Aye. Thank you. We look forward to seeing a uh, work construction in the near future. And that will take us to the director's report. Okay. Did you hear that? Yes, I'm just pulling up the slides. Oh, okay, you're, you're pondering. Um, Okay, are you seeing a single slide on the screen? And the next slide also. You are, okay, that's what I wanted to make sure was not happening. How's okay, that? We can ignore it. Oh. There, now we have one. Okay.
Okay, so before you this evening uh, with the director's report, I wanted to give you an update on the efforts made for business recovery since the um, in, in the past two weeks regarding the COVID-9 pandemic. Um, last Saturday, the county was granted a variance from the state to move further into the phase two so restaurants could open. Um, and the health official when taking these, when um, applying for the variance made it clear to all of our neighboring jurisdictions in the city of Capitola that when indoor dining is allowed, outdoor dining is a great alternative um, to make sure we um, provide adequate spacing between restaurant goers. Staff worked closely these past two weeks with the BIA and the Business Recovery Committee and has developed concepts to support local businesses. Um, right now with the current beach closure within the village, we are allowed to have seating on the streets except for the area adjacent to the seawall. So I'm gonna to present to you tonight um, what we've, um, the, the actions that we've taken to, to help out in the village and also the actions, the new processes available to all businesses within the city of Capitola. First, uh, we've moved forward, there was an emergency order passed um, by the city manager this week to streamline temporary uses and planning permits. This was introduced to the city council last week and um, had great support. And currently under this new temporary use permits, the conversion of parking areas um, can be utilized for businesses for uses such as outdoor dining or for religious institutions such as churches to move seating outside. Also um, allowing streamlined temporary use permits for takeout windows so restaurants can now request a takeout window with an administrative over-the-counter permit. Um, and then other uses to physically, for physical modifications to businesses. So there's another category within our streamlined permit if a business has a need that helps with the safety and social distancing requirements um, under the, due to COVID-19, we can accommodate that and look at each application um, as a unique, tied to their unique circumstances. So within outdoor dining and takeout windows, the city has, we, I worked on creating standards um, with staff and we now have an application um, that, and any applications which comply with all the standards can be approved administratively um, by the community development director as well as the public works director. So in our efforts working with the Capitola Village BIA, um, the, the idea to this concept is to maintain access through the village by the automobile at all times, replace public parking that's adjacent to restaurants with outdoor dining areas, also to create additional curbside pickup areas for folks who want to come in and just pick up food from the restaurants. So creating more 15 minute spots throughout the village, also parking, um, only removed in areas for outdoor dining and curbside. So maintaining parking throughout the village in areas that it's uh, not necessary to be removed to assist with businesses. Um, during the council meeting, there was also support for increasing the parking to three hours within our village lots and open parking along Cliff Drive. So that occurred today. And today we also began installing um, our benches throughout the city to identify those areas that will be used for dining. So on this map, you can see the blue areas are outdoor dining areas. And working with the BIA, they, they met with each of the individual restaurants, figured out exactly what their needs are. Um, this map was uh, many phone calls and many discussions to get to, but each, each restaurant that wants to participate has the ability to participate. They're welcome to come back at a later time and tell us that they'd like some parking spaces, but the map you're seeing in front of you tonight is close to what you'll be experiencing. Um, it'll probably start getting built out to, as soon as tomorrow, but definitely you'll see an evolution of our village in the next week. So along the Esplanade, the parking was removed today and 
uh, there's now a line of benches right in front of the restaurants. Each restaurant has space in which they can um, utilize on the street. This concept, it, it maintains the, the, the availability for the car to move through the village, as well as um, on the Esplanade, there will still be parking on the left-hand side of the street. We've been working with the um, hotel for their drop-off pickup location to make that smoother for them as well. Um, on San Jose Avenue, there's three restaurants, um, the Capitola Wine Bar, um, the hot dog stand. There's three restaurants that are going to be take, utilizing space on San Jose Avenue. Our, the new um, tasting room at 111 Capitola Avenue, English Ales, which opened maybe two weeks before the COVID-19 crisis or pandemic. Um, they're opening for business and they're also going to have some seating along Capitola Avenue and then um, on Monterey Avenue several of the restaurants and El, El Toro Bravo will be utilizing a portion of Lawn Way due to their unique circumstance being on a curve and making sure that patrons are safe. We also worked with the BIA to create um, design and infrastructure standards so that there's one cohesive look throughout the village. Um, as we had all of our benches stored up in the upper parking lot over the past couple months, we've now moved those down to the village and w through the use of nautical rope, um, planters and posts, we'll be creating, s the BIA has been working hard on creating stanchions and we'll create um, a nice cohesive theme that each of the pots will be planted with their um, the post will be put in the pot, um, cemented, and then a, fill the planter on top with soil and some flowers. And so that's the design and infrastructure and overall look. Throughout the city, um, we put standards within the guidance documents that individuals, so um, restaurants throughout the city are welcome to come in for permits as well for outdoor dining. And in the guidance documents, we ask that the design that they choose to utilize have some connectivity to the architecture of the building um, and site. So just want to emphasize that social distancing and other rules are still in place. So there is social distancing protocol that needs to be followed by each of these businesses. Right now it's um, currently the six feet of separation between that that'll apply to tables within restaurants. Masks are required indoors and outdoors when social distancing re requirements cannot be met. Um, and any business that is um, now opening, they have to follow the standards put out by the governor for within the resilience roadmap. So there's within the resilience roadmap, roadmap there's guidance for all of the restaurants opening up at this time and also um, for our bars and pubs and tasting rooms, all of those entities are also included in the resilience roadmap and now must serve food, um, a, a sit down, a dine in meal with any beverage. So you're not allowed to go into a tasting room right now and just um, for tasting, you also have to have a sit down meal. So next I'd like to show where to find permits in case there's any business owners tuning in from home. So on our website at City of Capitola, on, uh-oh, hmm, that's not gonna work. Okay, well, I'll talk you through it. On the City of Capitola website, under what's new, there's the business recovery page. It's the first thing listed. And applicants can go to the, can click under what's new under the business recovery page. And when they get to that page, it'll, there's um, some guidance for exactly what permits we're putting in place. So there's guidance for outdoor dining, there's guidance for changing out a window for a takeout window, and there's also a new, it's an agreement that um, for each of these applications, it's not a permit, it's an agreement, it's a temporary COVID-19 agreement um, that will be in place through at least for four months with the with the city and then extended every month after in which social distancing is still required 
by the county. So um, we're not sure how long these agreements will be in place, but we definitely, with the investment that needs to go into these improvements, um, we did put a four month minimum so that there's a return on investment for all of these uh, business owners. And thank you, Larry. So here is the Capitola Business Recovery Information page. And you can see the temporary outdoor activities is listed. And the, a couple of things that need to be filled out here. Um, let's see if I can control. So there's, here is the encroachment agreement and then the guidance documents are here. And then there's also guidance for ABC licenses for outdoor dining. So for any business that would like to serve um, beer or wine outdoors, they will have to um, get a catering, uh, um, yes, the catering authorization permit from the ABC. They're turning those around in a 24 hour period um, and it's a hundred dollar process. So that's what we have currently in place to help businesses. We're also um, working towards, on a separate note, um, getting some grant money um, from the at the state level to help businesses with COVID-19 related overhead expenses. So I'll bring you more on that once we actually have our application in and know more. But that's your director's report for this evening. Thank you. Thanks. Commissioner Communications. Commission. Anyone? None for me. Commissioner Wells? For me. None for me. None for me. Okay. Um, I would like to come back to the issue of the city council considering some uh, restrictions on the loss of housing stock. Um, along the lines of the Mellow Act. And uh, I guess I would just ask that there be some kind of, uh, maybe it'll find its way by appeal anyway to the um, city council, but I would like the staff to communicate that uh, request. I can bring that to them. Can you give your planning commission report? Yeah. Okay, anything else? If not, I want to thank the staff for um, great work and bringing us, helping us through this once again. And uh, it's been a long night. Uh, so we will adjourn to the meeting in July. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thanks, Kate. Thanks, Ed. Thank you.